Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about the River Valley civilizations. By the end of the video, there are three questions you should be able to answer. The first one, why were the early civilizations all built around rivers? The next one, which achievements of the early River Valley civilizations most impacted future generations and why? So this is an opinion question, but you have to support it with evidence. And finally, how did the rise of civilizations lead to many achievements? Three questions you should be able to answer. Here we go. So before we talk about the specific early river civilizations, let's take a minute to figure out what a civilization is. So why were hunter-gatherers, for instance, not considered civilization? Well, here are components. These are some of the major components you need in order to be considered civilized. The first is large permanent settlements. So now remember the hunter-gatherers. They were in very small groups, not large, and they did not have permanent houses. They would move when the food source was depleted in one area, they would get up and move to another place. So they did not have that. Written or other formal means of communication. This is something, again, that early people before the Neolithic Revolution did not have a formal means of communication, which allows for many achievements. Specialization of labor. Thanks to the Neolithic Revolution, when man learned how to farm, and farmers could grow more food than they needed to feed their family, which means that not everybody had to be a farmer. So agriculture was still the main job of most people, but some people could do other things. They could be artisans. They could make clothing. They could help run the government because the farmers were making extra food for them and they could trade and not have to farm. And finally, you have a centralized government. So you need to organize this large permanent settlement and make laws and rules. So you need a government. If you have these things, then you're a civilization. There were four early river valley civilizations. The oldest was around the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. So those are two different rivers. And Mesopotamia is the ancient civilization. The next civilization to rise up was around the Nile River, and that's ancient Egypt. Then you have the Indus River civilization, which is in India. And finally, the Yellow River, also known as the Huanghe, in China. So why did all of the early civilizations in Asia and Africa start around rivers? Well, think about what does a river give you? River is fresh water, unlike seas and oceans. So it gives you drinking water, which is the basis of life. It also gives you water to grow your crops. If you cannot farm and grow food, you cannot have a civilization. So these are two main reasons why the civilizations all grew up around different rivers. And most of these rivers would overflow which sounds like a bad thing. Flooding can kill people. But when the waters receded, it left behind a lot of minerals that made very fertile soil. So it was excellent for farming. The first and oldest river valley civilization, again, was around the Tigris River and the Euphrates River. And this is where Mesopotamia was created. The areas known as the Fertile Crescent 
these rivers, as I mentioned, overflowed and left behind very fertile soil, fertile crescent. And the area was roughly, very roughly, a crescent shaped. So that's why Mesopotamia is also, is often known as the Fertile Crescent. So what did these guys achieve? Well, the big one is the wheel. Okay, I'm sure you've heard the saying, don't reinvent the wheel. Well, it should be, don't reinvent the wheel that the Mesopotamians already did. This was a game changer, as I'm sure you can imagine, having a round wheel enabled many things in life to be improved. This was technology that really helped the early Mesopotamians. They created sailboats and chariots. Well, the chariot needed wheels in order to work, so the wheels big. We mentioned that you need a formal writing or communication. In Mesopotamia, they had cuneiform, which was triangular shaped type of writing that you see on the left-hand side. Another achievement was they built large temples for their gods. All of the early river civilizations were polytheistic. They believed in more than one god and they all built temples to worship their gods. This one is called a ziggurat, and every city-state had one. Another major achievement of the Mesopotamias was Hammurabi's code, who was the king of Babylon, and this is the first known written codes that were actually written down and put in the middle of town so everybody could read them. A nickname for Hammurabi's code was an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Why does it have that nickname? Well, if you committed the crime of taking out somebody's eye, what do you think your punishment was? Yes, they would take out your eye. And if you punched someone in the face and knocked out their tooth, what would your punishment be? Yes, very good. You would have your tooth taken out. Hence, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. We're moving on to the Nile River, which created Egypt. 3100 BCE is the rough time period that Egypt was unified into a civilization. And you can see on the right-hand side, the Nile River feeds into the Mediterranean Sea. Egypt is in northeastern Africa. They had many achievements. A few of them have to do with writing. Their writing was called hieroglyphics. The picture in the upper right hand corner shows you that they were pictographs. They used little pictures to represent words and ideas. They also made the first paper called papyrus, and there's a picture of that under the hieroglyphics. This was made with leaves from a plant. They would take the leaves and weave them together, put a little water on them, and let it sit for about 70 days. The water would mix with the juices in the leaf to create a type of glue that would stick it all together. They dry it out, and voila, you had paper. Well, if you have paper, you need to write on the paper. They made pens and ink. There's a picture of a pen next to the papyrus, and it was made from reeds, which has a little hole in the middle, and they would dip it in ink that they created. They also did many surgeries. The Egyptians, there are signs that they did surgeries on heads, shoulders, chests of people, and they created many surgical implements in order to, uh, to uh, do the surgeries. 
You can't talk about Egypt without talking about mummies and pyramids. Pretty much everybody is familiar with this. Egyptians believed in an afterlife. So when you died, you went on to another world that was very similar to your world here. So they had to prepare you for that afterlife. And mummies would be wrapped in strips of cloth. And oftentimes there would be a burial mask put on the mummy that looked somewhat like the deceased. And if you were a pharaoh, which was a king in Egypt, then you got a pyramid. And that's where they would bury the mummy. Pyramids were amazing structures that were 40 stories tall sometimes. They took up to 20 years to make. Tens of thousands of people working on it year after year, moving these stones to, to build these pyramids. They are truly amazing achievements. Where are we going now? Okay, we're going to China, the Yellow River, Huanghe River in Chinese means Yellow River. Time period is a little later, 1700 BCE. And this is where the Chinese ancient civilization began. If you look at the inset map in the upper left, you can see exactly where China is. It is in Eastern Asia. The Chinese made some many advancements, gunpowder, pottery, porcelain, which is a type of pottery. They invented the compass so that you wouldn't get lost. And one of their biggest inventions that they kept a secret for a very long time was the creation of silk, which is a beautiful soft fabric. And silk is made from worms, which is the picture you see there. Those are silkworms. The silkworms, when they move around, leave this gooey stuff behind. They leave a trail and there is stringy string-like substance in there, and that's how silk is made, from worms. Ew. China's achievements, again, uh, besides making silk, there was the teachings of Confucius. Confucius was a philosopher and a teacher, and he impacted China even up to today. Much of the culture and the morals and the beliefs stem from the teachings of Confucius. Some major ones are the civil, civil service system, which dictated that you had to take a test to get a government job. Before Confucius, if there was a job opening in government, somebody would give it to their brother, their mother, their son-in-law, Confucius said, no, you should be able to actually do the job you're hired for. So there would be tests created, and whoever got the highest grade on the test would get the job. And filial piety, the idea of respecting your elders, specifically the male elder, so your grandfather, your father, should be unquestionably respected. And this, again, influenced Chinese culture for thousands of years. We're moving to India now. The Indus River is where ancient India, Indian civilization began. You have an inset map to show you exactly where India is in the world. It is in Southwest Asia and the Indus River gave the early inhabitants uh, the fresh water they needed for drinking, for traveling along the river to trade, as well as water for their plants. Though India also had something called monsoons, which were heavy rains that would come twice a year, and they relied on those to water their plants as well. Even today, many farmers Small farmers in India rely on the monsoons 
to water their crops. We don't know as much about Indian achievements, ancient Indian achievements, because no one has figured out their writing system yet. No one's cracked the code on that. But from fossils and archaeological digs, we have found some things such as the ancient Indians had dentistry. They did oral surgery. They also came up with the first system of standardized weights, which means they figured out exactly how heavy something should be to be a pound, for instance. Using a scale, you could always make a pound be the same weight. They also had the first uh, plumbing. They had the first indoor toilets. So those are a few things that they have been able to figure out of the early Indian culture and achievements. So that's a quick wrap up. Just a little bit of information on each of the four early river civilizations. Here are the three questions again. You should be able to answer them. And because you paid such good attention, it's time for a riddle. So you get to smile or maybe even giggle. You're ready for my corny riddle? Every video I make has one. How can you tell if a vampire is sick? Think about it. It's simple, by how much he's coughing. <coughs> Got it? Thanks for watching my video. See you on the next one.